I was born in Sacramento, California, in, uh, on the 24th of uh, October, 1924. I can remember our house in Sacramento. It was a very modest house, it had two bedrooms, one bathroom, and it had uh, a closet that went through to each bedroom and a bathroom that went through to each bedroom so that it was a, a combination of, uh, of different areas. And we also had a porch, a swim, uh, student uh, summer porch that was uh, screened in and we used to sleep there in the summer when it was hot. There was this was before air conditioning, and uh, but Sacramento usually cooled off pretty much at night, so it wasn't that bad. And uh, we slept in uh, my sister and I slept in the same bed uh, outside on this porch uh, all summer. My mother made me a coat, and I hated it. I hated that coat. It was brown. I hated brown but she made it out of a coat that had been my Aunt Mary's, and I didn't like that coat. <laughs> and we, wore, we went to the dancing class, and I left the coat there on, pur <laughs> on, on purpose. <laughs> and it didn't go over so big, but we never got the coat back, <laughs> and I never had to wear it again. <laughs> They had an all-city orchestra, and they picked the best players from each school and put them in an all-city orchestra, and I, I was one of the cellists. We played concerts in other schools, and, uh, and we would have a school in a, a, uh, an opening in the uh, in an assembly room where uh, other children were uh, coming to see it from other schools. What did you excel at in school? What were your best subjects and what were your worst subjects? Uh, I didn't have any worst subjects. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I was a good student and, uh, and I was one of the smallest in the class at that time. There was one girl who was, isn't it funny, I remember this, her name was Rosie Alameda. <laughs> <laughs> and she was smaller than I was. But <laughs> My father had a was he after he retired, he had a wonderful rose garden, and he belonged to the Rose Society in San Francisco, and they had meetings and talked about the kind of roses and what you should do with them and when you should fertilize them and when you could do this and that, and so after he did that, he he met so many people there and they were really pleased with what he did that they hired him to come and do their roses. And he had never done commercial anything like that, but he did that and uh, he made enough money to pay for his social security. So he got a little bit of pension. One year, he had they had the Rose Society show, or they had the Rose, the Rose Show in San Francisco and they gave prizes for different kinds of things. And he won the, the prize for the when the queen of the show, and that was for the best single rose in the rose show. And I have that ribbon, and he was so thrilled that he, that was the, one of the most exciting things that ever happened to him was he got that. He got that rose, uh, that, play, that uh, party for the, uh, for the Rose Society. I went to uh, Lowell High School, which was at that time considered the best high school in San Francisco, and they needed a cello player, and uh, so I went there, and uh, that was where I met Midge, my friend, and uh, I've, we still keep in touch now. So that was when I was 13, so it was a long time. I wasn't a, I wasn't a pretty girl, and I didn't have a lot of, uh, but I had nice friends, and uh, I enjoyed them and the things that we did together. We used to walk to school most of the time, Sometimes we, tr we took the uh, streetcar. Then I applied to Cal, and I was accepted. It wasn't as hard then as it is now. Well, Midge, Midge my friend, was already there. She was a year ahead of me in school. And then my friend, uh, Denny Lennis, uh, Denny Leonard, was, um, and they were, were going to share a room. And there was a, a big room in a boarding house and it was big enough for three, so I went with them, and the three of us stayed uh, in this room. It was a big attic room, and it was, it was Miss Bartlett. It was on Waring Street, 2434 Waring. Well, I'm, Papa was uh, 
of living in a house with uh, two other boys, and uh, one of them was, um, was he was in law school, and one of uh, one of his friends was uh, was going with uh, uh, a woman that, I, that had lived at Miss Bartlett's that I knew, and I was um, a bridesmaid in her wedding, and and uh, Papa was an usher. Uh, I guess I was 21, 20, and we met uh, we met at their wedding. Uh, sometime later, not a long time, he called me and asked me if I'd like to go to a movie, and it was, I think it was Shakespeare, didn't they? I think they had a, a movie of Shakespeare or something. It was a, an unusual movie, and it was playing at the Stage Door Theater in downtown San Francisco, so we started going out. Tell and, about um, how long you knew each other before um, Papa proposed and... And how he proposed. <laughs> well, it was a while. And uh, so we, were, we had been out for dinner or to a movie or something. And we were, he was parked out by uh, the um, Sea Cliff. There's a really nice neighborhood in San Francisco overlooking the water. And um, so he had, he had asked me before, but that time I said yes. <laughs> And that was that. And then we got married in August 1950. And, uh, and uh, we lived in an apartment on, uh, on Sacramento Street, or California, I mean. Uh, those of you who know us, I mean, Frank doesn't know us, that my husband was handicapped. He had polio when he was a child, and he was severely handicapped. And my father was not happy about that. He was concerned about how he would make a living and how we would get along and so on. But he finished law school and passed the bar the first time. And, and we uh, started having our family. Our first child was born in 1952. That was David. And 54 was Dan. And 55, it was Leslie. And 57, it was John. And we had we had a wonderful family. My kids are all so great. We've had such wonderful life together, and uh, I miss my husband a lot. He's been gone six years now. We have a picture of uh, our 25th anniversary that we had a we had in uh, our house in Tiburon, and uh, it has all our kids, and and that was a that's a nice memory for us, and. Uh, and I have a, a, a picture of us, of Buzz and me, at a uh, at a party, and I was telling them on the way coming up that that was the the first dress I wore. I got it I Magnus, and I thought I was so rich that I went to I Magnus and got a uh, a dress. We built and designed our our house. We bought the, a lot. The lot was uh, forty five hundred dollars when we bought it, and twenty thousand dollars for the house. And uh, we built a, a three bedroom house and uh, two baths. And later we added on a family. We added on our family room and and um, uh, an upstairs with three more bedrooms and a bath. I still have friends that I played tennis with for many years. And we get together once a month and have lunch, and it's really nice to keep in touch with the people. I love where I live, but I don't have friends like that. It's different, you know. You, the people you've known for 50 years are not the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And your friend Mary's having her 90th birthday yeah, party. Yeah, my friend Mary Myers, who lived behind me, and we had a, a fence well, between our properties, and when Buzz built the fence, he left out a space so that we could go back and forth. Between instead of having to walk to the corner and over and up again, we walked. We could go back and forth, and the kids played. They had the dirt pile, and we had, <laughs> and we had the, the merry-go-round, and so on. <laughs> and we all, we all, they all played together, and uh, they they had always had nice friends. It was a nice neighborhood. All the mother, there was only one mother who worked, and she was divorced, and she had two kids, and she had to work, and uh, all the rest of us didn't. Mm -hmm. All the rest of us stayed home. Mm -hmm. And uh, What was it like um, having your first grandchild? Oh, it was wonderful, naturally. We were so thrilled. How many grandchildren do you have now? 
uh, I guess it's 12. I said 11, but I guess with Electra, well, who is my great-grandchild. So I guess it's 11 grandchildren and, and one uh, great-grandchild who is just less than, less than a year now. And uh, um, Yeah, and you've seen your grandson yeah. get married, yes. your granddaughter get married. Yeah, that, that's the wonderful thing about getting old is you get to see the things that your children and your grandchildren have done and I, I love them so much, and I'm so proud of all the things that they've done. Um, looking back at kind of who I am, um, I think a lot of that was formed by, you know, the upbringing that I had with my parents and just the stable, um, encouraging, and loving um, home that I grew up in. So I'll always be grateful for that and um, just, um, you know, they'll always be a part of me. Um, some of my best memories were, you know, I would get to go and spend the weekend with Grandma and Papa up in Tiburon, and there was uh, one time in particular when I got to go spend almost two weeks because I decided to do a sailing camp, and I got to spend so much time and really get to know them in such a different way, spending, you know, so much time together, and that was a really hard time um, when my Papa was very sick, and... Um, Grandma's very, very strong and took care of him for so long and um, just such a loving relationship. And I think that that really had an impact on me. And I love you so much. Okay. Well, thanks, Mom, for doing this. And yeah. thanks, Anna. It for... was, was easier than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You had some apprehensions, but you did an amazing job. Yeah. And I really you. appreciate you sharing your memories yeah. with us because we'll always have nice. this. Once yeah. you get going, you get. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of forget how long it's taking. But you also remember things um, yeah. that you haven't shared with us before, so yeah. we thank you for that. You're welcome. My pleasure.